All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, to me, what that sounds like, what I'm hearing is we all are hoping to like slow down a little bit, which makes sense because we're entering the windy season of fall. And that tends to be a very frantic time, especially for parents. So that makes a lot of sense. So hopefully we can all cultivate that together and share it out. <laughs> All right, um, agreements for this Zoom. As you all know, who've been in meetings with me, I always um, like to root us in agreements. These are not rules, these can shift. Um, these are all agreements that we've worked on as a board and as a community. Um, I highlighted a couple things for today because we are actually inviting input tonight. So um, keeping kids at the center will help with that. Um, to remember we're all learners, to listen actively, and to embrace multiple truths. Um, that's especially true when asking for input because what I might be experiencing could be very different than what other folks are experiencing. Um, if anyone would like to drop in the chat or just unmute themselves and share what else we might need for this Zoom space or what is especially resonating, or if you would like to add anything, um, I'll mute myself for a couple minutes and then I'm going to call on Maria again. <laughs> if anything shows up in the chat box, if you could just share it out. All right. Can we give thumbs up that we're able to hold these agreements today? The agreements look great uh, to me. Nothing to add tonight. Thank you. I think All we're right. on a good we're gonna, track. Yes. Maria's, um, those of you who are new and this is our your first PTA meeting with us, welcome, first of all, because I want to recognize that we always have new folks. And then folks who haven't attended yet this year but are old time PTA members, welcome back. Um, I guess I should introduce myself real quickly. Um, I am Erica Hartono, I'm your PTA president, and then Maria is our exec vice president, which is why I'm picking on her a lot, because <laughs> she helps me facilitate these meetings. Um, I cannot see, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see. Oh, I am also recording tonight's meeting so I can share it out on our YouTube channel for those who cannot attend. If at any point you don't want something to be recorded, drop it in the chat, say, please stop recording. You can send me a message directly. You can unmute yourself. Um, we don't have to record the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. I hope Emily is here. Miss Roberts. I am. Yay, so we'll start with our teacher update. Okay, hold on, sorry. I logged in and I had no sound. And so then I had to shut everything down. Um, give me just one second, apologies. Um, while Emily's finding her stuff, Emily is our teacher rep this year. Um, I see quite a few new faces. So when you um when you present, just introduce who you are, just in case folks don't know, <laughs> like who's this person talking at me. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm Emily. I teach first grade at Maya Lynn, and I also am the parent of a third grader there. So teacher and parent. So I just wanted to, I've been sending out a Google uh, doc to, um, to the teachers to just give a little summary of what they've been working on and any support they need. Um, so in kindergarten, they've been discussing helpers in our community and school and the neighbor, the greater neighborhood community and learning letter sounds. Um, discussing what it means to be safe in the classroom, being allies and really working on that empathy tool and growing as artists. Um, some of the things first grade is working on is a joy project, bringing more happiness to the hallways through art and color, um, exploring the yard and doing observational art out, outside of the classroom. And then we've been working on kind of a family book project, um, having families bring in books that in some way uh, represent them and they want to add to our classroom library and we're also as a first grade team working on uh, storytelling in lots of different ways so i'm always looking for resources um, of people who are great storytellers eric and i talk some about storytelling through dance so if you are a 
you know, a dancer or a, you have a great, you know, oral storytelling tradition and you'd like to share it with us, feel free to hit up one of the first grade teachers. Um, in third grade, they're doing a lot of multiplication and division riddles. They're creating books about themselves and the best part of themselves. Um, some Picasso inspired self portraits and family stories. Uh, Miss Spell's third through fifth grade class is working on an identity project where they're talking about their names, family structure, gender, gender identity, body image, class, race, language, religion. Um, in fourth and fifth grade, fourth grade, it looks like they're doing some Hispanic heritage or Latinx heritage month activities and study and zooming in and out as a metaphor for continent, country, state, and city. Um, they're doing some whole class book studies and writing personal narratives. Oh, and uh, many of the classes have gotten started with buddy reading, which has been really fun. Um, fourth grade is also working on descriptive writing um, and they're working on nonfiction writing as well. Uh, growing dendrites. So oh. um, <laughs> thinking about what kind of smart they are and what, what their kind of learning style is. Um, I also love reading these. I think it's great to have this like record of what we're all working on each month. Um, in fourth and fifth grade, yeah, observing the night sky. They're doing some great work with uh, in Mr. Gerhardt's class about mapping Alameda and the connections that kids have to different spots in Alameda. And he actually did some work with us as a staff the other day and we kind of made art and connected it to different places within our school campus. And so that I found really inspiring and thought about how I could connect that with my first graders and storytelling um, and how places hold stories and just kind of connecting to that. Um, and a lot of uh, looking for patterns in math and um, yeah, and multiplication and division. Miss um, Beck's class is working on some color theory stuff with warm and cool colors. Uh, Mr. Kelly's class is finishing up non -fic uh, fiction writing and moving into personal narrative. They're doing a whole group uh, literature study. Um, they're looking at habitats and relationships between animals and starting to look at indigenous tribes and early colonization, um, looking at geography. In the art room, they're working still on not wasting materials and focusing on reuse and recycling. And Miss Moore has an ask for empty toilet paper and paper towel tubes um, with no little paper bits stuck to them. <laughs> and she'd also love to have someone uh, who can wash and dry the smocks and rags once or twice a month. Um, yeah, in PE, they're working on recess rules and games and the upper grades are working on football. And in the library, they're introducing a student-friendly acceptable use policy and kind of talking about safety um, in the, the digital world. So that's what we've been up to. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emily. I love this up these updates. Yeah. It's really cool to hear this full school picture. Yeah, and something I'm really trying to express with the the teachers and get across is like using this as a space to gather those like non monetary resources, whether that's storytellers or toilet paper rolls, like how we can <laughs> get those out to like the bigger group and figure out like, well, we're learning about the moon. Like, so if there's somebody out there who happens to be like an, an astrologer, an astronomer, they can, uh, they can help out with that. So. All right. So I hear toilet paper is needed. I mean, toilet paper rolls are needed and storytellers, <laughs> maybe toilet paper is needed too. Uh, Okay, I'm going to move on to Alisa is going to give us a Monster Dash update. All right, are we there? Hello? Is everyone there? We are very oh, here. Yeah, for we're here. Well. Okay, sorry. Um, so first off, um, Monster Dash, I think was a huge hit. Um, I put out the sign up genius and we had lots of volunteers and then people that came to to be a spectator, if there was holes and gaps, no one turned me down when I asked them to help volunteer. So that's always a win. Um, as far as our goal, we blew our goal out of the water. Our goal was $75,000.
and this money, you know, is pretty much already agreed upon and spent. So uh, we need this money. It's great. Uh, we actually brought in a guaranteed total of $82,596, which is actually 110% to our goal. Um, we have an additional $7,192 in checks and company matching that is due to come in. And if we receive 100% of that additional funds, that would put us at 121% to our goal at a total of $90,668. Um, historically, over the last one or two years, there's always one or $2,000, um, you know, grandma's checks, neighbor's checks, whatever that don't come in. Or we could have closed down our online pledge system from receiving those, you know, two weeks past due. And maybe they just get, um, logged in as general donations. I'm not sure, but um, the good news is, is there was 1,730 messages sent. So 1,003, no, I'm sorry, 1,730 texts, emails, social media shares, but that many contacts went out. And with that, we had 1,306 individual families and friends that we all know um, actually make these donations. So, you know, I, I focus on, hey, let's get those emails out and let's set a goal of like 10 per person because I know if we get the messages out, we'll get the money coming in. So that's why I focus on that. Um, and regarding 470 students on campus, we had 360 actually register. So that was 70% participation, which is huge. Um, the site will remain open through October 14th, so we can still receive and put the money in. Um, what we've decided, because we did so well and so, you know everything was so successful, that we um, are going to give a school-wide popsicle party, and we're going to do a um, Maya Lynn family movie night. So um, the movie night is going to take place next Friday night, October 14th, um, and I've already reached out to some um, kids to volunteer, so I'm not going to ask any of you parents to volunteer. Um, we're going to have some NSNL Junior Jets. They have to, um, to graduate eighth grade, they have to log 20 hours of volunteer hours, and being that we're a nonprofit, um, going to help get that ball rolling. So I'm offering 10 kids, three hours, and they've already signed up. We're good to go um, at the movie night. Am I stealing someone's thunder about movie night? Am I stealing someone's thunder? No, you're all good. This okay. is all your thunder, no. Elisa. Take okay, it. I'm just making sure. So <laughs> at the movie night, um, we're going to play a uh, play on our monsters dash. Doo -doo. Um, we're going to do Monsters, Inc., the movie. Um, and we have two dads that are going to run the sound and the film, um, the school with our budget to throw the monster dash. We had some money to buy a, uh, an inflatable screen, a 20 foot inflatable screen. So we'll have this. And um, if we have excited, if my husband's excited and um, Jesse, another dad excited, um, maybe we'll do frequent movie nights um, on campus. So this will be an outdoor movie night. Um, someone reached out to Erica from the DECA club. So from NSNL, um, DECA club, they want to fundraise. So instead of us trying to sell and have more volunteers, you know, try to sell something, we're going to have them come and sell us stuff to help them raise money, which will help them helps us. And we get to take a break and just have a family night, have a community night. And, um, you know, we all win. So, um, October 14th uh gates will open to visitors and families at 6 30. you can pack in your own food or you can buy food from the deca club and we ask that you just pack out your own trash um and i'll be uh i have volunteers handing out raffle tickets um that we will raffle off some full-size candy bars um not a lot but some and then um before the movie starts and before it gets dark, we're gonna have kids come up to an open mic and do um, dad jokes. And any kid that comes up and does a dad joke um, will receive a um, pair of sunglasses with the slats that light up. Um, so there'll be a bunch of kids running around with these glasses in the dark and um, it's gonna be a hoot. So um, one disclaimer, we're gonna be telling people as they enter and we'll tell people on the flyer and we'll tell people, we'll tell, we'll tell people and we have volunteer students that are going to be actually guarding and manning the playground structure. 
um, that kids and students and siblings are not allowed to play um, for liability and safety reasons and for distraction-ish reasons um, on the play structure. So um, I'll have three NCNL junior jets manning it. It'll be all taped off with caution tape and it'll be wonderful. So thank you everyone for volunteering. Thank you for raising money. Thank you for sending out your emails and you know, whoop, whoop, monster dash is in the bag. Yeah, Elisa. Elisa is very generous and she really gives like communal love back to us, but she really is the, the, um, I don't know what to call it. Just the person who makes all the magic happens, brings us all together, has really good vision for how this can all work. Um, and at least I hope you're reading all the love you got in the, uh, chat box. Thank you for making the volunteer experience really fun and easy. Amazing job, good job. Woohoo, Monster Dash, thank you for organizing. Great ideas. Um, I love rad jokes, by the way. Um, I love that Mortiche referred to Elisa as the Monster Dash Mama Wolf, and I think that needs to be your official title. Yeah, Monster Dash Mama Wolf, for sure. I mean, this is huge. And then I just have to say from my own like stress level, we need to raise 102000 for the entire year. And if all of these company matches come in, we have raised 90K before October 1st even happened. And that is just huge. It's huge. Um, and I do want to acknowledge that quite a few people were like, why is it so early this year? That was to relieve volunteer um, capacity because uh, Monster Dash and Harvest Howl are real, our Harvest Haunt are really big volunteer lifts. But also what we found is that we have to pay a lot of money up front at the start of the year. And so it's just a really good habit that we just raise a crap ton of money right away. Um, let me see before we move on detail. Oh, yes. So to answer, I think it was Lori's question, the movie nights next Friday, October 14th, the doors open at 630 and the movie starts at 730. Um, we're going to keep on jamming through. If you want to continue giving Elisa love, please do in the chat box because she deserves it all. Um, I'm just going to give a really quick membership drive update. We did do sort of a low key fall membership drive this year. <laughs> um, I did. I tried not to hammer it home too much because we had Monster Dash. Uh, but our annual direct donations goal is $10,000 and we are up to almost 5,000. So we're doing great. Um, and our PTA membership goal is honestly a little arbitrary. I just went off what it was last year. So we're at 80% of that. Um, and I just wanna push monthly donations. If 12 families donated $50 a month, we would not have to ask for direct donations for the rest of the year, um, which would be really awesome. But to hit our fall direct donation goal, we just need 10 donations of $100, which I know we all just like, <laughs> We got 82K out of you all for Monster Dash, um, but direct donations, if we can really do this, then we don't have to fundraise in the spring, which would be fantastic. Um, at the end of this meeting, we're gonna do a Wingstop giveaway for all active members. So stick around. <laughs> That's the PTA membership drive update. Um, all right, we're gonna keep barreling ahead. We're gonna do committee updates tonight. This is something I hope that we do more of throughout the year. Um, this is the order we're going in uh, because of where we are in the calendar year. Um, so we'll start with Monica with Harvest Haunt, then we'll do a quick safe routes and you guys can read the list. Um, I'm giving priority to Monica and then everyone else, we just need to be a bit brief so we have time. So Monica, go for it, Harvest Haunt. Monica, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Yes, okay. you're great. I thought I pushed it. Okay. Uh, hello. Good evening, everyone. My name is Monica. For those who don't know me, I'm the VP of events. And um, so we are starting to plan the Harvest Haunt, which is a really fun um, event that we have for the community and for the school. This year, we're doing the same thing we did last year, which is we're going to have it at Washington Park um, because it's a big, beautiful open space with lots of grass and a good place to play field games, which we're planning on having again. Um, so it's going to be on October 29th 
from one to four. And this is a pretty volunteer dependent event. So um, an event, uh, sorry, a volunteer list will be going out soon. And um, last year was just such a blast. And so we're basically just gonna do the same thing we did last year. Uh, we're, last year we had, this year we're going to have a, a bake sale. So we're going to need some baked goods, some spooky snacks, and some savory things. We're going to have a cakewalk. We will have a dance party booth with Jason Pontius DJing and being the, uh, the party starter. A photo booth where you can take pictures of yourself. And um, we're looking for volunteers to be maybe like living decor. So if that sounds fun, hit me up. Um, face painting and tattoos. Um, rough and tumble field games. This was a really big hit last year where we had um, things like tug of war and potato sack races and stuff like that. It just, it just was so much fun for so many parents and kids. And so we're really excited to bring that back. Um, what else? Did I get everything? Yep. Uh, I think that's, that's everything. That's everything. So, going yeah. on with that. <laughs> it's such a good time. Um, and volunteers can choose like one hour shifts or they can stay the whole three hours. It doesn't matter, but every little bit of help counts and helps the whole thing come together beautifully. So sign up sheets are coming out soon. Thank you, Monica. And people are offering help in the in the chat. Um, let's see if we can get some eighth graders to help. Um, yeah, so we all get to breathe, but you're going to see a theme. <laughs> the end of October is a big volunteer lift. Um, and speaking of volunteers needed, I think we have um, Pauli. Is, is she here? I can't see to uh, talk yeah. about safe routes. I'm here. Hi, everybody. I'm Pally or Pauli, um, and I, my son is in kindergarten, and me and Eugenia are going to be co-leading on Safe Routes to School, and so Safe Routes to School is, you know, a program that tries to encourage folks to get to school using active transportation as a way to, you know, protect their health, reduce congestion, and um, protect the health of the environment as well, and so, um, some of the, the things that they do, you know, one of the things they do is like next Wednesday is going to be walk and roll to school day. And so it's a, it's a day to really like celebrate and encourage people getting to school by walking or rolling, or, you know, even if you, if you aren't in a position to walk or bike to school, can you park a little farther and, and walk that way? Um, and it's also a day where we, it's kind of, I mean, I don't know if you would say that it's like a good data gathering because it is, you know, it is a little hectic, but we do have a way to ask kids how they got to school. So we can kind of take a look at, all right, how are we doing as a school? Like how, how much driving is there versus how much going to school by other ways is there? And so there's like a little sticker chart and kids are going to put their a little sticker by how they got to school. And we're also, we're, we're going to give away pencils and, um, we are getting, hopefully they'll be here on time, but um, reflective stickers and they can just, you know, put them on their backpack or on their helmet or whatnot. And so um, we're looking for a couple folks that can help just hand out swag or help the kids put the sticker on that big chart that shows like, how did you get to school? Walking, biking, car, whatever. Um, and we're gonna open the, the uh, playground up at eight that day, sorry, the, the schoolyard up at eight that morning, um, just so we have a little extra time. Um, and so if anyone can help us with that, um, two of us will be, three of us will be in there like setting up by 745, but um, if folks can come at eight or maybe like five or 10 to eight to help, we'd really appreciate that. Um, and then I don't know, Carrie, I'm not sure if you saw this message, but um, the mayor's coming. So, I did see that okay. message, which is really exciting. And I'm putting it in the myelin news. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so, you know, like sometimes officials come and so she's coming and that's awesome. So 
Um, and we'll also just like talking about, you know, stuff happening in the city. Um, there will also be flyers there that we can give to, to parents about the active transportation plan, which is um, something that the city has been working on. You know, how do we, you know, how do we make a more walkable, bikeable, safe city to encourage like routes and connectivity that help people do more of that. And um, they're looking for feedback from the community. And so I'll have a flyer if folks want to, you know, take a picture of the QR code or take a flyer or something like that, or talk to the mayor about it because she'll be there. And so it's a good opportunity to talk to your elected officials. Um, sorry, I went on too long. Okay, that's it for now, but there are other things throughout the year. And there's also like classes for kids, like on like safe walking and safe biking. And we're trying to organize some of that too. And I see some, I don't know if they're, okay, they're, they're clapping hands. I wasn't sure if it was hand raising. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paoli. Sure. Um, so Eugenia and Pauli are stepping up this year as our new safe routes coordinators, and it's exciting to have new energy around it. So thank you. Sure. Um, and if they have inherited the role from the wonderful Lisa Foster. So I'm excited to see this program up and running again. Um, I believe Lauren Kelly is here to uh, give a sort of debrief on Science Camp. Yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you I have not met, I'm Lauren Kelly, and I have a current fifth grader and a current first grader. Um, and I, along with Dee Dee Lewis, uh, helped organize the science camp for the fifth grade class that happened yesterday, a year ago, I'm not sure, a couple weeks ago in September. Um, our fifth graders had the opportunity to attend an overnight outdoor science camp called Camp Campbell in Boulder Creek, California, which is kind of in the Santa Cruz mountain area. It was a four night camp. They departed school on Tuesday morning and returned Friday um, at the end of school. And I have heard lots of really wonderful things about camp. I unfortunately was not there, but my husband uh, who is a fifth grade teacher was. And uh, kids uh, in the feedback I've received in the form I sent out all positive, People said it was the right length. They loved the activities. Um, they were able to do, there was swimming, there were day hikes, there were night hikes, there were camp songs, there was uh, having to line up and be silent before you were admitted into the mess hall, you know, for meals. So a lot of great, you know, experience and a lot of, um, they had naturalists to do a lot of the, the science and nature learning. Um, so really wonderful experience. The fifth grade class, you know, we had a couple, uh, bake sale fundraisers um, to help raise funds. So for the current fourth grade uh, families, um, definitely recommend starting that early. We had a, quite a compressed timeline, um, but uh, it, it all worked out in the end and was a successful science camp trip. I don't know if there's any other specific information you want me to share or questions uh, that anyone has, Erica. Um. Yeah, I mean, if anyone like I like with all of our wonderful committee leads, if you can give shower them with appreciation in the chat box, um, that would be awesome. And I do want to just like also honor that science camp hasn't been able to happen since the spring before 2020. So what is that 2019 um, last year's fifth grade families hustled a, or I shouldn't say hustled. They rallied a wonderful science day, um, but it's exciting that this kind of programming can start coming back. Um, we will do also just so those of you who just joined us, we are going to dedicate at least 10 ish minutes to community input. Um, so if you have like thoughts, um, we can share then as well. Thank you so much, Lauren. Yeah, of course. And it was early, it liked Monster Dash um, Science Camp was super early this year. So the families had to really, really. <laughs> Hustle yeah. to make it happen. Yeah. And, and just a note on that for some historical context, I actually think the last group that went, it was in October of 2019, because the, the first year it happened, they wanted spring, but like all the dates were taken. So they went earlier in the year than anticipated. And then the group in 2020 was set to go March 17th of 2020. So we all know what that timing was like. Um, and what was interesting as a parent, it all felt very rushed, but uh, my feedback, my daughter's feedback, uh, the teachers, you know, actually thought, 
going in the fall was quite nice because it was like a good experience for the class to take right at the beginning of the year for bonding. So obviously up to each class to plan and work with, you know, the fifth grade teachers to figure that out. But um, what I thought was going to be a, a negative was actually a positive. So that was nice to see. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, I'm going to keep hustling us along. I need to get a different word than hustle. Uh, <laughs> scurrying us along. Um, I believe, well, let me look at my little slides. This is why I make slides because I forget stuff. Um, oh, yeah. It, do we have I know me uh, to give a little garden update? Yes. And I will be really brief because I really hate talking in front of people. So that's going to be easy. Um, so I guess the first thing I wanted to update everybody was that we are working with Emily and the staff to work up some garden nor norms. And I think you've already started, Emily, like implementing them or talking with other staff about them, right? I yeah, I showed them to the staff and gave opportunities for feedback and opportunities for them to take them back to their classes for feedback so we can get those established. Yes, and that's all in the efforts of having, I guess, uh, classroom visits right with their with teachers and kind of I guess supervised visits for now in at least in the oak garden um, I guess for probably for both gardens and then um, for the main garden we are working with PyTalk and we are we've met with them and they are per currently in the process of making up some garden drawings for us and then we once we get those we're going to turn them into AOSD MOF for approval and so that's pretty much where we're at on those two. I, I can say that I helped over the summer with, um, there was some, you know, uh, we tried to help, we tried to plant some stuff and I think it's taken off and it looks really good in there um, in, the, in the oak garden, which I don't know if we want to continue to call it the oak garden since there's no longer a oak tree there, but it is historic and it ties back into that awesome mural. mural so anyway uh yeah that's kind of i guess that's it Lori. if there's anything else i'm not the committee head we're all just co-committee people so uh Lori, if you have anything else to add i'm gonna say that and otherwise i'm done just we one have quick a thing. question yeah after Lori. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have our garden meeting and we're gonna do it the second thursday of the month so it'll be the thursday after the this ptv yeah. meeting and um erica i think i need to give you this specifics to go out in the parent square announcement. Okay, I'll do it. Monica. Hey, are there going to be any group gardening days where volunteers can come and help um, weed and do other things in the gardens? Yes, I will say that we have not met yet, really officially gotten started. So I think next Thursday, we'll know a lot more about that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but that's in the works. That's our hope and dream to have us all working on it. And I think we'd also will start looking for correct me if I'm wrong, uh, parent volunteers, we'd love to have the garden open, maybe two days a week at lunchtime. So uh, I feel like a, a strong knowledge of plants is not totally necessary, but helpful. But like, also being willing to kind of crowd manage and <laughs> monitor these expectations that we're establishing. So we hope to do that to get some kids in the garden for a more informal garden time. And teachers are signing up right now to have time slots that they can visit either either or both gardens with their class. Yeah, I would add, I would echo what Ms. Roberts said, which is really it's just about feeling comfortable making sure that we have a smaller group of kids and that people are being safe in there, but it's just the chance to explore. We can't have kids in the garden during recess right now because you have to have grown-ups in there to observe the space, and we have a lean team at recess and lunch, um, but we would love support. Okay, are there more questions? I see him. Um, Mine's not really a question, but I just wanted to um, let folks know, especially anyone on this call who's like, I raised my hand to be part of the garden committee and I know nothing about this. We haven't really like connected committee leads to volunteers yet. So if that's you, just know that that, that step hasn't quite happened. Um, so I'm putting lists together and I'll make sure I know me and Lori have it and they will well, I'm telling them this right in right now in this meeting, they will loop out and make sure that you like know when the meetings are and when the work days are and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll pass it to Monica. 
Hi again. I'm wondering what happened to the apples. Did the apple trees grow apples or were they um, were they pruned to the point where they didn't produce apples this year? I'm just curious. Oh no, I feel like we had a ton of fruit over the summer. We had a ton of it. We and we still, I think, still have some. I haven't been in there in a little while, but <clears throat> I know we had some apples. But I know we also were fighting some bugs. Um, but the thinning out that was done last year, I think, really did a great job for this year, and we still have more to do. Um, but yeah, I think we're, as far as I know, um, Jackie and I think Lori would be able to speak to this more. But I think we're in, a, in we're doing good in there, though we have more work to do. <clears throat> I just have a quick wondering. I'm kind of new to all the. PTA part of it. I see people saying they want to help at lunchtime. Is there a way to capture that or should I just write it on my post-it? <laughs> like, or is there like a more official? I'm I'm capturing it, but if you could okay. capture it as well, Emily, that would be good. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> actually, that's a really good question. Everybody, <laughs> our brains are at capacity. So that volunteer interest form, if you could utilize it, even if you've like, I've signed it a million times, if you can use it, write your name in, say, and there's like uh, anything else uh, field and it says, I want to help with lunchtime garden volunteers. If you could do that, it helps us capture you and make sure we reach back to you. Um, oh, look. Okay, so I'm going to keep speeding us along. These are really great garden questions. Clearly, there's a lot of excitement to like get our hands in the dirt and help the school garden. Um, and to push us along because uh, Nathan just joined us. I was going to give um, an A's game debrief. Um, he like literally just joined, so he might not be ready. So while he's getting ready, I do want to say Emily Boys, our A's coordinator, is not able to attend this evening, um, but she's doing a fantastic job. She has uh, hooked us into a new program called Step Up to the Plate for Education. And that code that we all use to attend the last A's game, you can use it for any A's game and $5 from every ticket goes back to Myelin. So like if you're going with just a group of friends who aren't even connected to Myelin, if you use that code, $5 per ticket goes back to the school and it also gives you discounts. Um, Nathan, I know you just joined us. Oh, there you are. Um, if you wanna just give us like a 45, six second elevator pitch about how awesome the tailgate was, that would be great. Yes, the uh, tailgate was awesome. I had my friend uh, Tito help me out and it was um, my very first tailgate. Uh, there were mistakes made, so I apologize again to all the parents. I was letting Erica know <laughs> where we were at and <clears throat> from our location, I saw an A and on the ground there was a 14 and I said, we're in section A14. Turns <laughs> out we're in section A3. The three was facing away from us um, and the aisle is 14. But um, we had Wolfie there, uh, which was awesome. Our friend got us um, on the Jumbotron uh, with the kids and Stomper and Wolfie got to have a moment together, which was awesome. Stomper got to come out and hang out with uh, Wolfie. Um, we had a great area where we were tailgating. The kids were able to run around and play and be safe. So it was phenomenal. Um, I absolutely loved it. It was it was a great experience. Thank you, Nathan. Um, yeah, it was really good times. I am not a sports ball fan at all, but I my heart is with the A's forever. I'm an Oakland kid. And for me, like I found myself getting weepy throughout the whole night because I was like, oh, these are the A's games I remember. So um, thank you so much for organizing that. Um, Again, I hate I hate urgency and I hate rushing, but I am going to rush us along. If there is anyone on this call who is heading up a program who hasn't talked yet, if you could just unmute yourself and say, I'm so and so and I'm in charge of blah, blah. But I think we've hit. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Gina. That please model for everyone what I mean. <laughs> Hi, I, can you hear me? I have this headset on. OK. Hi, I'm Gina. And uh, I do the safety team uh, for the morning drop off, only morning <laughs> drop off. And um, uh, I, I guess it, uh, just to recap, I guess for us is that we this year we have 15 adults that are uh, participating weekly and then a whole bunch of them that are in case of emergency call us. So that's really cool. I have about 32 kids uh, that participate each week, which is fantastic 
in October, or we are in October, on the 28th, we're going to do a party for completing our first quarter. Uh, we're going to do like a Halloween party at the school and, and really honor the kids that have been given it their all, which is really exciting. Um, what's really cool is the city referred to, referred um, our school as being a school that has some really great best practices uh, to like five other schools, or at least five of the schools in Alameda have reached out to me uh, saying, hey, can you help us out? Uh, we hear you guys are amazing. Of course we are. And uh, so what's really cool is I've had an opportunity to share um, some of our best practices. We've shared material and, um, you know, uh, the packets that we give out, anything that we have, we have been sharing um, with all the schools that are interested. And uh, right now we're in the talks of doing like a, a Zoom training <laughs> for, for the schools. Um, they're getting their people together and we may be doing like a training to just make sure that our city no, no matter what school you're at, you're gonna, um, your kids are gonna be safe in the morning during drop off. And it doesn't matter if you go to Love School, if you go to Mylin, if you go to Wood School, um, any kid in Alameda is gonna be safe in the morning at drop off because we're sharing our best practices and we're sharing, you know, um, any knowledge that we have to make sure that our kids are safe. So that is the update, which is really cool. Um, and that's it. Hey. Thank you so much, Gina. I just scoured everybody and I don't see any other committee leads. So thank you everyone for sharing out. We're gonna try to do this more often. Um, we realized, I should say when I say we, it's the royal we, I, Erica, <laughs> realized that because I sent out the dispatch, because I'm the president, because I'm very social, it seems like there's like one, maybe four people doing everything, but it's just not true. Um, so I'm really hoping to get our committee leads to share out um, at every meeting and also put the shout out for things they need. So what I heard is we need volunteers for next uh, Wednesday's International Bike to School Day. That's not what it's called, it's called Walk and Roll. Um, we need lots and lots of volunteers for Harvest Haunt, which is Monica. Um, uh, one thing that we, I'm still figuring out, but just so you all know, Book Fair has been moved up from November to October 31st to November 4th. I have to talk to our media center people about it, but that is also a big volunteer uh, lift. Um, and then I think those were the, the volunteer help stuff that I heard. Um, I'm gonna zoom us ahead. I see wonderful things being dropped in the chat. Um, <laughs> please look at them because I'm gonna keep us going. All right, I totally messed up and forgot that we have to approve our minutes. So I'm sharing this on the screen. I've also shared the link in the chat box if somebody could help me by um, dropping it into the chat box. That'd be great. Um, and somebody who's not me could please lead us through the I motion to accept the minutes mumbo jumbo, I would really appreciate it. But I'll just scroll really quickly. This is what we did in the September meeting. Um, thank you, Carly, for putting this together. Carly is our secretary. And Carly, actually, if you want to unmute yourself and just, I don't know, tell A us. A motion to approve the minutes from the September meeting. I second. Who was that? Nathan. <laughs> okay, Nathan, thank you. Okay, any discussion or edits? Okay, if you approve, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Carly. Um, I saw a question, thank you, Megan, about the SJEC. Um, we have not, the SJEC hasn't met yet this year, but just so you know, the SJEC is supporting our diverse projects, um, sorry, diverse book project, which was uh, spearheaded by first graders last year, second graders, Miss Day's class. Third graders. Third grade. Oh, thank you, Carrie. <laughs> um, you looped the other way, yeah, went down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, so that's a big thing that this SJEC is supporting this year. Um, the SJEC is also trying to see how we can um, bolster, uplift, support, do restorative justice workshops to also support the work that's happening at the school. Um, so that's kind of the quick update there. Um, actually, Mike is here. Mike, you, if you wanna 
jump in. Mike is uh, a fifth grade parent this year. So Mike is slowly passing along the torch. Um, but Mike, if you wanted to unmute yourself and give a quick update. I, I don't think he's actually here. He's, he does look a little frozen at the moment. <laughs> oh, I'll have him check it when he gets back. Oh, that's Amy talking. Okay, no worries. Um, all right, we're gonna keep on going. Let's see, where are we? So community input. All right, <laughs> this, uh, this is a little bit of a dramatic <laughs> slide for this, but one of the things, um, those of you who are new to uh, PTA meetings, one thing that I as a president really want to work on is how, and this, these are big scary words, or I shouldn't say they're scary words, but they can feel like big words, is how can we as a PTA disrupt um, culture that protects power? And in our country and in our culture, that's white supremacy. Um, I love this slide because it's, uh, it's giving the things that we can do in lieu of things like power hoarding, um, you know, perfectionism, keeping things in a tiny group, um, keep doing things behind closed doors, these kinds of things protect power. So I love this slide because it talks about the things that we can do in lieu of that. So like being flexible and sharing and multi uh, ways of doing things and collaborating and quality over quantity, all that kind of stuff. So um, one of the things I really wanna actively do this year is gather input from our community on a uh, continuous, um, what do you call it? Just continually. So it's not just at the end of the year, we don't just ask, how did we do? So with that said, um, what time is it? I wanna honor time. I think we'll take 10 minutes We've all heard um, updates from our committees. We've heard updates from our teachers. We've heard updates from events that have happened. So I would love for everyone to take a moment and think about questions that they're having, thoughts that they're having, things that seem to be working well, things that are not working well. Um, we also have a jam board for those of you who don't like unmuting um, <laughs> and sharing that way. And, I will drop this link in the chat box, but you, you can come up here and you can grab a chat box and you can say, or sorry, a sticky note, gosh, I'm tired. And things that are working, I'm having fun, <laughs> for example, I don't know. And then you can put it over here, right? And then things that are not working, um, too much going on. I'm totally just making these things up and then you can put that over here. So this is for people who like don't wanna unmute themselves. Um, we also have a community input Google form. This is an open-ended community input form that's open all year long, and you can use it at any point, as many times as you want. You don't have to attach your name to it, and we will always be looking at this to get feedback. So I'm going to unmute myself. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna drop the jam board. Oh, thank you. I've already yeah, dropped. I'm assuming, um, and I'm gonna just mute myself. And I guess we can use the raise hand feature so we don't talk on top of each other. Um, and please be free. Like you can give us positive feedback. <laughs> That's encouraged as well. But uh, also, you know, if things are re something's really not working, please let us know as well. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't use the raise hand. Sorry, I'm just gonna say something. <laughs> uh, I I feel like the vibes are really good here. Like I, this is great. This has been a great meeting. I this is the first one this year, but just um, yeah, I was. It seems like a lot is happening, and a lot of people are putting in a lot of time and effort, and I feel like I'm not doing much. So it's encouraged me to um, uh, to take on maybe a new task or a new responsibility. So just thanks to everyone for doing everything you're doing and keeping us all headed in the same direction. <laughs> Thank you, Savannah. And yes, you don't have to use the raise hand feature. You can also just unmute yourself. <laughs> Uh, just to call a couple of the jam board good about communication enjoying all the energy uh we have a form for feedback and input i think that's like a really good starting point uh i like the monster dash being earlier in the year more people 
or I'm gonna move some of these. Uh, more people at meetings, very organized. I love that for being put into checking everyone's bandwidth and not volunteering. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. I also just want this Jamboard is always open. <laughs> Please be considerate and don't erase what other people wrote. But you can always come here and I'm going to just show like last week, last meeting, we said, what do you need or expect from leadership? And folks shared these things um, at the first meeting or at the PTA welcome Zoom. We talked about how we feel when we are in authentic community and we feel a true sense of belonging. And then we shared the values that are upheld in those places. And then um, we had a collective brainstorm. So this Jamboard is always open. So you're always welcome to use this as well. Um, how are all the folks doing all the work holding up? <laughs> I won't speak on behalf of everyone else, but <laughs> we're doing just fine. <laughs> um, I'm glad October is here. Uh, August and September was a lot for me. Does anyone else want to share how their bandwidth and capacity is doing? Carrie? <laughs> Doing great, doing great. Lower COVID numbers, we all are back and being together. There's been so many wonderful events, so it's been a great start. And parents are loving the Padlet, so yay. Um, so parents that are not able to attend some of the events, they're able to see pictures of their kids. Yay. I don't want to rush us through this, but <laughs> we have a lot to do, so we're going to keep going. Um, so I am a person who is a complete dork about restorative justice and restorative practices. And part of what we do is we do spend a lot of time building relationship and trust and sharing values. And it does often start off really positive, but hopefully, and I don't want us to like run into problems with each other, but what this means is when we do hit walls with each other or things do go wrong, um, we hopefully can have enough trust and relationship built to address those things. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Like, <laughs> if you do not like what's going on, that is also welcome. You are share. You are free to share that. Um, but we're going to keep going. I just wanted to highlight all of the things happening in October. We kind of went over a lot of it already. Um, on the left are the October happenings. Um, oh, Parent Math University, I need to update this. That is not happening next week um, because Carrie's postponing it so that we can attend the district hosted um, workshop on Zoom called How to Talk to Your Kids About Race. I'm not quite sure if that's the title, but it's, um, it's a workshop to talk to kids about like how to talk about race with your kids. Um, and then those three th um, things, and we really need lots of volunteers, especially for Harvest Howl and the book fair. And then I don't know if Faye is here, but we have a new volunteer log. Every time you volunteer, please fill this form out because um, volunteer hours help us keep our nonprofit status. And um, we're going to just keep going. I hate rushing things, but um, Carrie has a principal presentation about the safety procedures at Maya Lynn. So I'd love to make a good amount of time for that. Carrie, I'm going to pass off to you. Perfect. And can you give me screen share capabilities? I'm just going to show a, a sheet. Um, so I'm not going to talk. I've decided to not do a slideshow presentation because that's the fastest way for you all to leave. Um, so hi, uh, it's nice to see you all and thank you for coming. I really, it's just so wonderful. It was really lovely to hear all the different events and I um, just want to honor that it's a lot being a parent and it's, I, we see you and appreciate how much you're doing. Um, we, uh, I wanted to share a little bit about our safety procedures. One of the things um, that we've been talking about in our morning opening is that our focus this month is, this is our be safe month because that's one of our school wide expectations. And it times out because it's the beginning of the year and earlier in the year, so we're still really thinking about what does it mean to be safe at school, but also it's a time of year when there's a lot of drills that are scheduled um, because we're making sure that we practice these things. And 
um, you know, I just, I want to acknowledge in this space here, um, and this is what I say to our staff when we do our trainings and all that is um, people have a lot of feelings when they think about school safety and you think about your child. So you might find that you feel really upset or nervous. You might find that you feel really uncomfortable and need to laugh. It just I want to kind of honor whatever feelings you have here um, because they're all valid. And this is a really complex topic that I wish we didn't have to talk about. And then the other thing I also want to acknowledge is when we talk about safety, just everyone in this room room has diverse experiences with what safety means and who makes people feel safe and how they feel about local officials and stuff like that. And so I just, I think it's just important to always name that. And, and we talked about that as a staff because a lot of the training videos involve um, white police officers. So there's just really different feelings. And that's not what our students were watching, but I just wanna always acknowledge that that's a, that's a backdrop there. Um, <clears throat> so the, um, let me see if I, can you, I'm gonna- Yeah, I was gonna say, Carrie, can you please try? Should work. Yes, maybe. So I'm, it's not a very um, a beautiful document. I'm going to acknowledge this. Um, well, let's see. Oh, there. There it is. Okay. Um, but I just want to direct folks just to kind of what, and I'm going to be sharing this out later this evening when I send out the Maya Lynn news. Um, but this is, I took our AUSD procedures and made them a little more specific to Maya Lynn. So I'm going to be sharing this with everyone. Um, but there's, when we think about um, school safety, there's a few main things that we practice. Um, and we, I should say that we do a monthly fire drone. I'm actually gonna start with fire and um, gonna jump around a little bit. So we do a monthly fire drill. Some of you probably have heard that we had um, an accidental pull of our fire station, uh, one of our fires stations on Monday. And so our students got extra practice this week with drills, unfortunately. Um, but they were great about it. And so that's just uh, something where we make sure that we are using our online notification system and practicing what we would do if there was a real fire. So that's on a monthly basis at all AUSD schools. Um, earthquake is something that we practice um, twice a year. So we do it uh, first with the Great Shakeout of California, and that's on Thursday, October 20th. And um, then we do it again once in the spring. And really what we talk with students about there, and some of you probably remember this from things you've done, is that we drop, we cover under a desk because if anything's gonna be falling down, you wanna make sure that it's, you know, bookshelves are not falling on you, but they're falling on the table above you, um, which can provide more support. Um, and then you hold. And then as soon as the shaking stops, we immediately exit regardless of if, um, uh, an alarm goes off or anything because we just don't know if it's safe to still be inside. Um, and so when we do that, we'll be practicing with students the, the drop, cover, and hold. It's a California-wide thing. And then the exiting piece. Um, and just talking to kids about, you know, what they can do to make sure that we stay safe. The next two are the ones that are the heavier to be talking about, which is our shelter in place and our lockdown drill. And I think that's the one that probably gives us all the most anxiety. Um, and so a shelter in place, when we talk about that, that is when there is a concern in the community. And so we want to make sure that our doors are closed, that are, you know, that we're securing ourselves on the outside, but we can continue to teach. So examples of that might be if there is, and you can see here, like a chemical spill, an environmental disaster, if there is a nearby safety concern. Um, so it might be that there's something that's happening five blocks away. And just in case, we're going to start the shelter in place so that we are prepared if we needed to go into lockdown. Um, but also, we don't think at this point in time, we need to be stopping teaching or anything like that. And so when we practice that with students, and we really only do shelter in place once a year, um, that's where we just talk about, you know, we pull the doors closed because they lock, pulling down our shades, and then continuing um, to teach. And so that's a pretty brief drill that we do. Lockdown is what we call our active threat um, drill. And we use a thing called um, the ALICE protocol. And I'm just going to pull it up quickly. Oh, oh, snap. All right. Well, let's <laughs> see if it works here. Um, so, uh-oh. Well, um, let me see if I can just go back. I will, I, you know, I'm just going to talk about it. So ALICE is an acronym that um, 
that we use, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is and then how I talked about it with students when we did our lockdown drill on Tuesday. So the idea behind Alice is that the old way of um, doing things where it was just a lockdown stay in one place actually wasn't really serving anyone um, because it wasn't nimble to the situation that can be changing and it didn't empower people to make choices. And so the big thing with Alice is that the A is alert. So it's anyone can let anybody know in whatever way possible if there's a concern of any kind of threat on campus. Um, and we as a staff, because we do a training at the beginning of the year, and then we also do a refresher in December, we actually talked about examples of things that you would want to alert someone about. It could be something that you know for sure is a problem, or it could be maybe I heard firecrackers, but I'm going to alert everyone so that we can investigate further. So, but anyone can alert. Lockdown is when you actually lock the room and you are um, using whatever you can to barricade to make it so that people can't easily come into the space. I is um, for inform. So the idea is that we just continue to actively tell people what is happening and where um, the threat is on campus. Um, and the idea with that is we're not trying to keep anything a secret. We want everyone to know so that they can make the decisions. And we would broadcast this on our PA. We would use our Share 911 um, notification system that you can see uh, in the middle of this page right here. Um, but we have different ways that we're sharing information as um, frequently as possible to update. Um, I'm gonna skip C and come back to it. Um, C is our counter and then E is our evacuate. And really in, um, I'm gonna come, I am gonna come back to C, but evacuate is often in a lockdown. If um, support wasn't able to get to us quickly, we would work to evacuate as fast as possible. Um, and so part of the important thing in this informed piece, oops, excuse me, um, is, making sure that, you know, if, if um, there is an active threat in, um, on the top floor, well, actually our students in room 18 might be able to, to get off campus really quickly and safely. So whenever possible, we wanna make sure people have the information so they can decide, hey, I'm safe enough that I can actually evacuate and that's gonna be the safest thing for kids. Um, the C, and this is the one that I just think feels the heaviest, so that's why I wanted to come back to it last, is our, absolute last resort. We are never planning to have to do this, but it is the counter. And the idea is that um, you can um, trying to move and get away from um, someone and uh, just the, yeah, it's like you're countering an active threat that's in the space. Um, so that's what Alice is. And again, it's about empowering people to make choices with the information. We talk about it really differently with our kids because they're in elementary school. And so I want you to know that we are not sitting there saying, how are you going to fight somebody in the classroom? It's not how it looks. What we did is our, um, our teachers talked, um, did lessons and we had lessons for K2 and we had lessons for 3-5. So they had done that before our, our drill. And then, um, oh, and I had it pulled up, but then my um, internet went down. I'm having some um, issues, but I guess I can pull it up. When we are, uh, yeah, I'm having a bit of a hard time with parts of my internet for some reason. Um, but, uh, oh, so now it's all down. Okay, I'm gonna stop screen sharing then right now. Um, oh, sorry about that. Um, I don't know why it's not working. So, um, and I'm gonna talk about our designated, yes, Washington Partners are designated safe spot. So, um, what I did is I got on at the beginning and I said to students um, about how we were going to be doing a pretend drill that um, it's about, and there's better language than what I'm going to be thinking about right now, but what we wanted them to know is that they're safe here and that what we're doing is just in the way that we practice how to be safe at home. So we would lock our doors at home and stuff. We at school are going to be practicing the things that we would do to stay safe at school if there was something they concerned about. Um, and that, you know, the grownups are here to support them and we care a lot about them and that everything about this is pretend. And then even when we did it, um, so we would say, you know, this is a drill, this is a drill, this is a drill. Um, there is a pretend, we made sure to say pretend intruder in the front office. And then the teachers then we would send something to the and they would be talking with the students about what, what would you do in a situation like that or how would you approach it? And it was much more about and answering questions. And the big focus is what are all the things we can do to stay safe? Because that's actually what kids need to hear is 
that there are things that they can do to keep themselves safe. And we know that the world can be ugly and that some of the things we are doing are only going to do part of it, but also that there are things that we can do, but they need to know. And I think it's really important for kids to feel like there are things that they can do to protect themselves. Um, and the really important thing is to listen to the grown up who's with them. Um, and the conversations look different in a kindergarten or first grade classroom. I know Ms. Roberts could, um, could echo that um, than they did in a uh, you know, fourth and fifth grade classroom where they had more um, complex questions, but we did a couple of um, scenarios of, of an, um, pretend intruder in different places, and then we made sure to let the students know we appreciated it, and then the teachers were checking in with students afterwards. Um, so that's how we set it up, because we're not trying to scare students. There's nothing realistic about it. We definitely don't have a pretend intruder at all, um, but we just wanted to be able to think through that process with kids, um, and so we'll do that um, three times throughout this school year. Although one of the three times um, is actually, sorry, our shelter in place. So we'll do two lockdowns and then one shelter in place practice this year. Um, and I should also add that the district sent some district leadership stuff and they were with us while we, um, uh, while we did it to just, you know, think through afterwards, like what went well, um, is there anything that we could think about doing differently, anything about our facilities that we need to be reconsidering. Um, but that's, that's the big way that we approached it. And then the most important things that I want you all to know, and I'm sorry that the <laughs> my internet went out before I could show this part of it, is I know families are really curious about like, what is the information I need to know? So I wanted you to just kind of know about our, our drills and how we approach safety overall. Um, but we also, oh, actually, before I go on, I wanted to say one more thing about the drill, which is I did come and speak with Alameda, um, Alameda Arts and AMP afterwards. Um, I had talked with, because um, some of our after school staff actually came to the collaborative drill because they just wanted to see what it looked like. And then I spoke with the students afterwards to remind them that, you know, the same tools and strategies they learned in school are what they would do after school. And then also just so they could see that any of the adults in that room, so we had them all raise their hand, were the people who would support them. And if you're an AMP, it might be someone from Alameda Arts who's who you're with because that's who you're closest with and vice versa. So just making sure that they were supported throughout the whole day. The ways for families to, the important things I want you all to know. So one is um, Washington Park is our reunification place. So, you know, if it's a fire and we're able to stay on campus, then we will be out on our blacktop area on campus. That big white shipping container has food and water and supplies for uh, three days. Um, so if we needed it, but if we needed to leave campus, so we're thinking about reunification, active active threat or something like that, then um, Washington near the basketball courts would be our reunification area. And we would be sharing in as many ways possible with families. So, you know, obviously using Parent Square, um, phone calls, uh, they would try to put it on the radio if if, in, if um, phones were down, any way that we could broadcast it. Um, but it is to say that it's really important that we have the most updated contact information for you. So if you need to update it, please do always let us know because it's really important. Um, and then the other thing is just as a, you know, as a parent, we don't want to scare kids into, um, it can cause a lot of anxiety to always be worried about the threats. So in, the what they everything that's out there from psychologists is really like you want to take a glass is half full approach about something that doesn't always feel half full um and again it's like what are the things you can do to be, um, keep yourself safe who are the people that make you safe feel safe at school oh we lock our door like i was saying lock your doors at home well we keep our doors locked at school and just reminding them of all the ways of empowering them to think about what they can do to keep themselves safe um and you can always, especially if you think you're a child, it would be helpful. You can look through um, those forms and just talk them beforehand about like, what would they do in a drill? And, and um, so you can preview and review the stuff whenever you'd like. Any questions? That was a lot of information. Um, there is a question in the chat, Carrie, and it says, um, you know that the the gates are basically close to the building so if the if the building is you know on fire how do the kids get out of the blacktop yeah so and it's um it's interesting this is a conversation i'm actually in with the district right now where we're looking at some of our fencing stuff um because we do have a we have a number of quick release exits um so if they're in the building and they're going outside I, is the question then 
yes. So if there's a fire exit start next to the okay. So we do have um, the Santa Clara easy um, easy exit spot. And then the thing that I'm talking with the district about right now is having another quick release um, location. And so that was a conversation that started at the end of last year. And apparently I asked enough questions that we're actually reconvening our district safety meeting as safety team to look at some of the standards because it, it is raising some good questions. So it's something we're working on right now so that there's a quick release over um, on Taylor or 8th um, because that is towards our reunification site. At this point, though, if students, it doesn't mean that they have to go directly, you know, down 8th to get to Washington. And in fact, in a in a true emergency, people are just going to be scattering different ways. And the ideas of the reunification is that we end up in the same place. Um, but all to say, this is something that we're working on because it's, um, yeah, it's a question that I had too. Um, and we do, I should say that our staff do have keys to the padlock that, for the gate on Taylor, but we want to make it so that they don't have to be using keys in an emergency situation. Um, and then the other offsite location, um, just this is in an, in an event that we had to evacuate people from all of the areas across the district. Our district-wide evacuation would be at a, a gym at the Naval base. Um, but that's in a scenario where across the island we had to evacuate. Other questions? Can't believe y'all hung on to all of that. This is, it's a lot and late in the evening. Thank you, Carrie. That um, that document that you have looks really informative. Um, yeah, and I have to just say, I don't want to make things very sad and heavy, but my oldest was um, a kindergartner when Sandy Hook happened. Um, and so this stuff is terrifying. And I have to say, I'm so relieved how far we've come with these um, active drills, these active. Drills. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of learnings over the last um, 10, 15 years about what are the best practices. Um, and it looks really different now. And I'm sure it'll continue to evolve in different ways. Um, but I think that it's, I think we're getting to a better part. Um, that is a conversation, Shani, about the open fencing. Um, and I know that there is a project that was being thought about a while ago, and then it kind of got put on the back burner with so many things happening at the end of the year and um, trying to resurrect it around. Um, Nalani Ward had been helping us think about some really cool um, things we could put around our fencing that would be um, decorative. So we're going to be going back to that and trying to think about how to put something in place. Yeah, as Laura said, art on the fences. Yeah, um, Carrie, you should take a moment to read the chat. There's a lot of thank you for keeping our kids safe. Thank you, Emily and Carrie, for being safe adults on campus. Um, and yeah, it, it's a lot of emotions for parents. So thank you. Which you are all parents too. So yeah. And then I'm <laughs> I'm the one who's gonna rush us along and be like, now we have to talk about finances. Um, but I just I would like to give 30 seconds to like make space if anyone has anything that they want to unmute and say before we move on to so I know in the agenda I said I was going to talk about communications next but we're gonna we have to do the financial stuff first um, but I'll give 30 seconds if anyone wants to unmute. All right, um, I'm gonna keep on moving. Thank you so much, Carrie. That is all really important information for us as parents. Um, all right, I'm skipping ahead here to our financial nuts and bolts. I believe Megan's gonna take us through this. Um, if anyone could drop these links into the chat, I'd appreciate it. But here is our financial reports from July to the present. Oh. <laughs> That's the next thing. That's very fun. Okay, hold on a second. Um, ah, what happened here? And then here is our amended budget, which sounds big and dramatic. It's a very small thing. Um, Megan, take it away. Hi, guys. I am the financial secretary this year for the PTA. And um, as your previous treasurer, I just want to recognize the work um, of Laura Adams, who has put all of this together, can't be with us tonight because she's celebrating her daughter's birthday. Um, but she, for everything that's happened and for all that we've done and all that we've fundraised, 
it really takes a lot of record keeping and Laura has been hard at work. So kudos to Laura for all of her hard work. We have raised quite a bit of money. We heard about that from Elisa earlier. And then we have also spent um, a significant amount of money. So whoever has charge of the screen, you can just scroll. I just wanted to point out a couple um, of the larger items here. So these are what checks have been written in the last um, month or two. And so certain things are going to the garden, they're going to um, the operations of our school. And then we have um, the integrated learning and professional development for our um, teachers. We have our AUSD um, intervention lead. Thank you for the, the circling. Um, arrow. So we are trying to provide reading um, intervention, and that's what Ann Levy is doing, and the PTA is um, allowing that to happen for a lot of our kids who weren't able to get the um, reading education that they needed during COVID times. How do you teach a first or second grader how to read over Zoom? And so the PTA is really supportive of that um, there's also a few field trips that are back in action. Um, the PTA always sponsors some of the scholarships for um, our Alameda Music Project. That's our after school program that provides music education to a whole lot of our kids. Um, and so, yeah, we're doing really neat and exciting work. And all of that can be found here. Are there any questions and discussion? All right. Well, without further ado, we just we do have to ratify check numbers. So um, let me just get the numbers back on my list. Give me just one second. Um, oh, I lost it. Where are our check numbers? Ratify. Thank you. Numbers. So I just wanted to get in the minutes that we are ratifying check numbers 2776 to 2814 for a total of $118,678.70. And this will all be um, presented in the audit. Good work, everybody. And if anyone's worried that we spent $118,000 in September, we also raised about that much money in our um, uh, Monster Dash and direct donation drive. So awesome. Yeah, and it's important to note that a lot, there is carryover as well. So we're spending down carryover. <laughs> um, thank you, Megan. Megan, do we have to vote on the amended budget or do we just tell people? We need, well, we need to motion on these checks first. Oh, Someone sorry, thank you, Carly. <laughs> Did someone oh. make I motion Thank to you. approve checks number 2776 to 2814. Elisa Bell seconds. That motion. Hi. Do you need more information? Do we want to discuss? Um, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Cool. And then there is, I believe that there were a few amendments to the budget. Um, Erica, thank you for pulling them up. They are highlighted here. And so we changed the amount we're spending on the first day packet copies because I think we had an initial um, budget of $250 and it costs a lot to copy, make copies. And so the actual amount was over that 921. So we'll just be increasing that line item as well as um, supplies. So the supplies for the PTA, things like plates and paper copies and printing things um, was $1,000, but that has been reduced to 330. So it's sort of like a net zero because um, we put that into the um, above line item. Are there other amendments, Erica? Nope, that's it. That's all. <laughs> and so we do need as a PTA, the membership's approval on that. So I motion to approve the amendments to the 2022-2023 PTA budget for Myelin. 
Lori seconds. Any discussion? Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. And if you see Laura Adams, she's been hard at work. Give her kudos. Yeah, Laura, Laura has been hard at work and Megan has been doing a great job onboarding her and getting her up to speed. So, um, all right, we have three minutes. So we're gonna do our Wingstop giveaway. Wait, Erica, I think <laughs> oh, yes, I, I, thought I had a note that we also needed to motion to release funds for quarter oh, two. Thank you, Carly. Yeah. This is why we have other people on the board who are not me, because I'm not good at this stuff. Yes, so what we're doing this year is we're releasing funds one quarter at a time. So we have released all the way through the end of October. Um, and at this meeting, we need to release quarter two. So that's November, December, and January. Um, and all that means is that if people write checks up until January, we can pay them and we can reimburse them. So someone needs to, are we voting now? Someone please take us through the next part. <laughs> I'll make a motion to release the funds for quarter two. And I second that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Sounds like a passed. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to answer Alex's question, that volunteer form, you, we really just have to put the hours in. Don't worry about all the other questions. That's just mostly so we can kind of keep track about what volunteers do at the school, but that's that's extra credit. Um, okay, can we do our wing stop giveaway now? <laughs> Did we do all the official stuff? Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Carly, for keeping us honest. They have been sending me DMs being like, Erica, don't forget X, Y, Z. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I did prepare like just a sort of um, talk through like how to make PTA communications work for you. Um, we acknowledge that there's a lot happening all the time for parents from the district, from us as a PTA, from the school. I will hang out um, on the Zoom for like an extra five to 10 minutes and do that and record it. So then you can, always, you can watch it later or you can hang out with me. But we are gonna try to do giveaways at every meeting um, for active PTA members. And what that means is people have gone here. Oh, that's the wheel of names, just kidding. <laughs> uh, I linked this wrong. I thought this was linked to our, um, our membership. So you, if you have paid your membership dues, you are considered an active PTA member. And all of those people are in this wheel. Tonight, the winner of our active membership giveaway is going to get a gift certificate to Wingstop. So you need all the fried food you want. All right, unmute yourselves. Click to spin. Click to spin. Click to spin. Here we go. Let me hear. Woo! Lemon pepper. No me. whammies. No whammies. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Priscilla Henneman. I don't know if they're here tonight, but congratulations. I will reach out to Priscilla. Somebody please put that in the notes so that I can make sure Priscilla gets their wing stop gift certificate. Yay! Erica, can we go rogue and just do like a random drawing of who's on still tonight and give another one away? Sure. Should we just keep going till it shows up for somebody who is? No, because that's Wolfie. Wolfie just howled. Heck yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to do one more. We can go rogue as rogue as we want. This is, by the way, it's tiny, but these are all- I want somebody who's on the call. That gets must be present to win. Must be present okay. to win, there it is. Thank you, <laughs> who was that, Benny? Must, this is the must be present to win giveaway. Must be present. Must be, must present, be present to present. win, here we go. It looks so cool. <laughs> How many gift cards do we have? <laughs> Zach Properti, not here. Doesn't get it. All right, let's keep going. Keep on spinning. Keep, you keep on, on spinning. spinning. <laughs> you better shout out if it lands on you because I can't see you all. Ooh. 
Kristen Kepler. Well, this is nice. Now we all know who's in the PTA. Okay, we're going to keep going. <laughs> this might take forever. <laughs> I think maybe we should just pick a number out of a hat. Jessica Chin. All right. Let I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna you, you well, can I'm Rick right or Cracker. Oh wait, Wolf! Wolf is here! Yay! 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 I can tell Yay! 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 Jessica! Woo! But Jessica has won a gift certificate to Wingstop in the and amount of twenty dollars. Yeah, and so has Priscilla Henneman. Someone please write that down somewhere so I don't forget. Um, I don't know what the giveaway will be next time, but we will give away something at every meeting. And I think Megan, you're right. It should be present to win. Well, or at least but we, that's too Well, maybe two. We'll do two. Yeah. Yes, Priscilla Henneman. Exactly. Thank you. Um, all right. Before I give you all, for those of you who want to stick around, you're not required to at all. Let me just see. What did I do for our close out? I usually like to close meetings with something. Check. Oh, what are you feeling appreciative about? You may unmute yourself. You can throw it in the chat box. What are you feeling appreciative about? I will hang out a little bit longer and <laughs> make a little recording of the ways that we can communicate with you. So go ahead and unmute yourself or just drop it in the chat box. Maria, if you want to uplift it so people don't have to listen to my voice anymore, that'd be great. Such a positive meeting. Appreciate for this community. Thank you. The wing. Oh, that was mine. Uh, I'm appreciative about fall. So getting to participate now and meet us first gay prom tomorrow. Awesome. I appreciate all the volunteer hours. We're now they're going too fast. Um, all the volunteers hour, everyone's logging. Love the wheel of giveaways. I appreciate the entire Maya Link community. Everyone here is so, so positive and supportive. Thank you all. Gay Pride Whoop. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you all for coming here to give so much to our school. Erica, I, I am sorry to say I, I noticed another financial nut and bolt we might need to do. Oh, no, no, don't, don't I apologize. Carly. We we still have quorum, so let's do it. We Let have it to file the report, the financial report for audit. We have to file it. Please tell me what that so means. <laughs> it says no motion is needed. We just have to say, have you heard, have you seen the report, which was in the minutes? There was a link in the minutes. Are there any questions on the report? No questions? Okay, then we can. I have report. seen it. <laughs> the report will be filed for the audit. Am I so is supposed to it. say I have it. seen it? <laughs> okay. Everyone should have seen the report. It was linked in the meeting minutes and linked in the chat. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, that stuff makes me tired. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to do my little PTA, make the PTA communications work for you. I'm going to try to keep it under five minutes. Um, and, and then it will be recorded and people can watch it later. Before I do that, does anyone want to say anything so you don't have to get stuck if you want to go? <laughs> I, wanna I appreciate say Carly. I wanna say go for it. I just want to say that the, um, all the photos that were uploaded on the Padlet from all the volunteer photographers and, or, you know, photographers and um, the parents, they're amazing. I love seeing the smiling faces and all the colors and the, you know, in action shots. I am so appreciative for everyone that shows and take picture, pictures and volunteer. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Love the volunteers, love the photographers, photographers, and I love it, thank you. Erica, I appreciate your meeting manager energy. It's, it's just great, thanks. Yeah, I have to say, I never thought as a dance teacher, I was gonna have to learn how to run Zoom meetings, but here I am. <laughs> I had to figure it out. <laughs> um, Alex, did I see you unmuting yourself? Um, me, Alex? What? It looked like you unmuted yourself, but I, maybe I was wrong. Oh, yeah, no, I, I didn't. Um, <laughs> sorry. 
Alex is like, no, thank you. Yeah, I, I don't have anything helpful to say at the moment. <laughs> wow. Other than I have gardening equipment. That's helpful. That's yeah. helpful. And Alex, we're going to get you looped in. It's the same thing with folks who are interested in the SJEC. We really haven't gotten our committee, our committee, our comedians, our comedian committees and our, comedians. <laughs> and our comedians, our committees and our comedians. We haven't quite got them up and running yet this year. So um, we're we're working on it. OK, I'm going to do this thing. I will not be insulted if you all have to go, just so you know. Um, but I, we've gotten a lot of just like, oh my God, there's so much communication at this school. So I wanted to just do a quick little, make the PTA communications work for you. Um, the short of it is everything's on Parent Square. So if you feel overwhelmed, go to Parent Square. I know um, it can be confusing because we also have a Facebook group. Um, there's Google groups that are not super active, but they do exist. Um, there's a small Slack channel for the board. There's a lot of ways that people are communicating and connecting, so it can feel a little overwhelming. But now that the district has made Parent Square for us, like that is where everything lives. And I try to do the best job I can to make sure everything you need lives in there. So I'm gonna give you all a quick little, little uh, overview of Parent Square. Um, I strongly recommend that you have this logged in on your computers. The desktop version is much easier to understand than the app. The app is fine, um, but the, I find the app a little wonky and overwhelming. So this is what your home page looks like. And I just going to do a quick run through it. So here are the events. Um, actually, let me start from the beginning, beginning. If you go up here, it says my school classes and groups. So if you're a person who's at like a million different schools, it might feel overwhelming. So you want to click here and everyone at Myelin is in the Myelin PTA group. So you can click on that. And this in this group, so this is what this page looks like. This is our um, feed. So you'll see that that's where all of the um, dispatches show up and then sometimes calendar postings show up there. And then here is our calendar. Um, I find the calendar really, really helpful. So you can see what's coming up and we do the best job that we can to make sure that each calendar posting has the information that it needs. Um, so for example, even the, the affinity coffees have a little description about what they are and when they are. And this will show up in your, um, your phone app as well. And then also you can see here, there's a running list of all the things happening. Um, okay, so to go back to the posts, you can also look over here and there's signups. So if you're someone who wants to volunteer, this is where you'll find the signups, right? And you can sign yourself up. Um, let's see what else. And then here are links and we're doing our best to make sure these are helpful links. So here's all your volunteer forms, the reimbursement form, if you need the PTA to pay you back for stuff. Um, Jamie, who I know is on this call, is putting all of our Myelin PTA dispatches into a Google folder for us so we can find them in one place. Um, and then the website. So that's that. And then I just also wanted to let you know that if you need, um, if you prefer the dispatch, or sorry, not the dispatch, the parent square being in another language, you can click up here. Um, I just turned everything to Spanish. But yeah, oh, here you go. Um, and you can choose a different language here. This is not working so well for me right now, but usually, I think my internet's too slow. Usually you, you can go and find the language that works better for your family. Um, and then, oh shoot. Oh dear, I, I've lost where the settings are. Hmm. If anyone can help me finding, there are settings in, oh dear, oh, here you go, my profile, my account, okay. If you go here, you can go to your settings, your notification settings. And if you're somebody who's like, I am getting way too much information, you can put it into digest mode, right? And you can do that for your text or the apps. I am finding that the digest is extremely overwhelming because everything comes at the same exact time. That has become a little overwhelming for me, 
but other folks might just want one email a day from Parent Square and then they can do digest. And so you have to decide how you want your um, Parent Square to work for you. So that's what that is. And that's, that's a very quick overview of Parent Square. Um, we are working to make our website a little bit less overwhelming. Um, there was like a lot of really amazing information on our website. I'm working on bringing it back in a resource tab, but it was a little bit too much and there were lots of dead links. And so we cleaned it up a little bit. Um, this is our homepage. Anyway, you, you all can, but um, the important thing here is the calendars are all here. So your upcoming events are here. The calendar is here. Carly updates that for us. And then down here, you can find the Parent Square calendar. You can uh, link your Google calendar to the Myelin PTA calendar. Um, and then there's actually also a Google Doc that you can print up and put on your wall if you want. Gosh, my internet's really slow right now. So that's that. I'm going very fast, I know. Oops. Ugh. Why does my, my uh, thing is too sensitive? Okay. Ah! All right. Then, so that, oh, I, so I went over the calendars. There's also a link tree. This was me just being dorky on Instagram one day. And I was like, oh my gosh, look what we can do. <laughs> so I made a link tree and it has just like links that are simple to use. So you can do this and get your membership. You can make a direct donation here. Hint, hint, hint. Um, you can fill out the volunteer interest form. Anyway, it's all here. Upcoming events, right? I'm gonna add on things like the volunteer log and um, what else, the community input form here as well. And then let me see, did I get everything? If you ever have questions, please just send an email to myelinpta at gmail.com. I'm the one on the other side answering those. I'm gonna start slowly roping <laughs> Maria into answering them with me. Um, and that's kind of it. I know there's a lot more to it than that, but these are the places you can find your information. Um, I do want to say that we're trying to work on the rhythm of communications. It seems like a weekly dispatch is a lot. Um, so we were thinking about doing it every other week, but I'm finding that the flip side of that is that it means the dispatch is going to be twice as long, which will be equally overwhelming. Um, <laughs> we've taken a lot of the reminders off of the calendar from Parent Square, so you're not getting reminded all the time. Um, Carrie and I are trying to align on maybe not so much the how, but what we're communicating so that we're kind of putting the same messaging out uh, from week to week. Um, but with that said, there's, there's always room for improvement. So if you have ideas about communications, please send them our way. We don't want to overwhelm you. We just want you informed. Um, and I like all the bunnies that Alex is collecting. And that's it. Um, if anyone has questions, I'll unmute myself or thoughts. Coolio, I'm going to uh, stop the recording. <laughs> is that okay with everybody?